Welcome to Decker Tech. I'm Aaron Decker, and today we're going over the starting decks for a Madness 15 run in Across the Obelisk. Now, I have uh, one of the top scoring runs, and I don't do anything different on the starting towns. Right now, what I've done is I went ahead and I did all basic divinations without picking any of the cards, so I only got the crystals. So this is the, the worst case scenario you can get uh, just running divinations. Uh, I didn't do any pets, but you could do you could fit in a pet with this 300 extra shards. Um, you could easily fit in um, one of the two cheapest pets, or you can. There's plenty of places you can fit in a, a pet or two, and I'll go over that. But this is uh, the bare minimum. You should always have a deck better than this because this is me not taking any of the divination cards, and I'm taking the assumption that you've been playing across the obelisk you've been pushing madness and you're struggling to get uh into the higher madness levels and i'll show you a a team and some decks that'll get you to the end this is the same deck i use uh for my top scoring runs or for just getting past the first act like this this is consistently gets you to the end of madness 15. so the team we're going with magnus up front cornelius otis and reginald uh, Reginald is our main damage dealer with Cornelius, a little bit of a backup singer. Mostly, though, everyone is just supporting Reginald for max damage. Now, the, the order does matter in the fact that Otis and Reginald have the same speed. So ties go to the person in the front of the team. So I want Otis in front of Reginald so that Otis can buff Reginald before his turn. Uh, eventually, I'll later make sure that uh, my armors and stuff affect that. So that Reginald is always going last, Magnus is always going first, and Cornelius wants to go as fast as possible. That's the, the team comp. And I'm going to go through the decks. I'm going to go with the most important decks and the least important decks. Most important deck, Reginald. Everything in here needs to be a holy spell, a zero cost vanish, or replace itself. Uh, that's going to be your mantra for him throughout the entire run is holy spells and vanish. Holy spells and card draw. Like He just wants to have consistently powerful lots of holy spell turns. Now we're going with the assumption that Cornelius is going to feed him some some energy and some cards so normally what you do is you plan on how many cards you're going to have consistently each round assuming you get past the first couple rounds and your deck thins out like once these healing rains are out of my deck and these clarities are out of my deck what are going to be my final cards my final cards are going to be a storm the smites these inner fires which replace themselves with the draw ones and these flashes and this fanaticism so that ties up to one two three four five, six, seven. I didn't count these because they were placing them. So seven cards in my final. So that's my five initial cards plus the two that Cornelius is going to feed me consistently. Early on, before we get into our consistent draws, these clarities will kind of help replace themselves into my deck. Make sure that Reginald is drawing through his deck fast enough that he gets to that consistent deck early. Uh, most important things here, inner fire. The three powerful. Now, one inner fire will, if you draw inner fire every turn, you'll maintain max stacks, but you've got to get to max stacks first, which is right now 10 powerful. So this 10 powerful, that's going to be 50% bonus damage. That's going to be the second most useful way to boost Reginald's damage. The most useful ways is this Bless. So we're planning on stacking Bless, Powerful, and Vulnerable to make sure that Reginald does the maximum amount of damage possible. So priority is Bless and then Powerful. So these double inner fires are to get us two max stacks and maintain it. You only need one to maintain it, but since we don't have anyone buffing his power right now, we got to make sure that we get to a high amount of stacks first, and then we can maintain it through the inner fires. Um, later in the game, you'll get cards from Cornelius or Magnus or Otis that will buff the power of Reginald, and you can start taking these out. And then you can get items that maintain your power level. But So we have power, and then we have bless. Two smites should be enough. We've upgraded the smites to the three cost smites so that they have the sanctify. You kind of need the sanctify to keep Reginald healthy and to get through thorn stacks. So the, the two cost smite will give you two bless and the three cost smite will give you three bless. So there's really no difference there on bless to cost ratio. Uh, it's just you're also getting the benefit of the sanctify stack. So the three cost is the way to go unless you have another source of sanctify or if you have an item that is increasing your bless, in which case the, the ratio changes, you know, the, the three to three, two to two will change there. So without items, this is the way to go. And on this run, we're assuming that we're going to go to the hatch and get a free upgrade uh, 
from the Cornelius at the altar. So I haven't upgraded the Storm. When I upgrade it, it's going to go to Bless. And unless I have Max Bless, in which case it goes to Sanctify. You're not going to have that till Act 2 or 3. So Bless Storm is the best Storm. Um, and like I said, everything else here is Vanish. Healing Reigns, best card in the game. They Vanish. They add Regen. Perfect. Fanaticism. So if we add up... Um, we're going to have 3 starting energy plus this 2... So it's going to be 5 plus the 2 from Cornelius. That's 7. So that's enough to cast a Smite and a Storm every turn or a Double Smite. So we're fine with our cost of our cards here. And then, of course, Flash is filling all the empty card slots. Uh, let me know if you have any questions on that. I'm going to keep... I'm, slow, I'm going slower than I want. Uh, I'd like to keep this fast and let it be a question and answer at the end. Uh, Otis, next important. With him... Our goal is to get a, a five-card deck where we are constantly able to keep our team alive. So Prayer of Protection is a really good coverall. Barrier on everyone. Heal them up, everyone. It's really good. Also, later when you get items, it interacts well with them. Uh, and then Shield of Warding is, a, is our single target heal. And the nice thing about this one, the reason we upgraded it, is the two vitality. So two vitality is basically a heal 10. It goes through decay. It's not affected by decadence. Uh, it's not purgeable, like, you know, the barrier is purgeable, or the, sorry, the shield is purgeable next turn by, you know, shield purge heroes like Bacon. Um, so the vitality is really nice to, to get a good buffer, and you can also pre-heal people with it. So the vitality is really strong. And then we're keeping Sacred Bolt as a damage option. Eventually you'll take it out of the deck because you're not going to expect to do any damage with Otis but it's also a really good source of Sanctify. So it's good to help stack up Sanctify so that other people can hit the target and heal themselves. So you'll kind of balance between these three spells on which ones you need to do in a turn because we're going to have two extra energy from Fanaticism. So a Fanaticism plus our three starting energy is five, and the five cards that aren't Vanish here are Fanaticism, Dispel, Prayer, Bolt, and Warding. So we'll always be able to cast three of these, well, yeah, Dispel and two of the others if we, you know, are keeping a consistent cycling through our deck. And then everything else, thing else here is Vanish. Uh, we like the Courage until Otis gets to the level that he can use one of his talents to apply Courage to the team. And also just a zero-cost Vanish that does things is good. Otis, this is a heal spell and, a, you know, a turn delay shield. And, of course, Healing Rain, best card. Keeping the Atonement now because it's just a zero-cost Vanish and it adds Sanctify stacks... There's really no downside to it. You will find better cards later, but it's it's not worth our shards to remove it from the deck now. And then, of course, the barriers. We upgraded them to the heal versions because uh, you can use them on... Because, one, they vanish, and two, you can also use the heal to kind of catch up on anyone that needs healing, especially Reginald, who has Bless, and it's amplified from it. And just block in general is not good for Otis because he's so slow. Uh, you will use the block from him to help with the self-harm of fanaticism and inner fire since you hurt yourself you can use the block to kind of mitigate that and otis this this so you'll use a little bit of the block from this but mostly uh block is wasted on otis uh next is cornelius now this does not look at all like his starting deck uh really we only kept the scrolls of intellect and this flare right everything else is basically gone and as you can see everything is zero cost vanish cards the, the Reigns, I've upgraded them to the Heroes only, so that we don't remove fire from our enemies, but we can purge fire from ourselves. Uh, the reason I enjoy this is because these Healing Reigns, I don't want to be stuck holding on to them to clear fire for my team. I'd rather just burn through them and get the regen going on you know my healers. And so Cornelius can be the one to hold on to a Reign for the, the fire boss fights, to be like, hey, I need to clear burn, and let me hold on to this for cycle through my deck once and play it out. Also, it's just a zero-cost vanish, honestly. Like, it's one of the first things to go. Rain and Ice Lances are the first thing to go in this deck, but they're just zero-cost vanishes that are cheap to craft. So we're trying to keep our, our gem cost down here. Final five cards for Cornelius are going to be these two Scrolls of Intellect. We're going to upgrade this one through the altar at the, the Cornelius uh, event. Uh, these two Ember Storms and this Flare. Uh, the Ember Storms, you can eventually turn into Devanish, the upgraded versions, if you get like a three cost spell, like a Combustion or a Scorching Ray, stuff like that, you could just turn these into uh, to Vanishes and use that Ray as another thing and then keep like a, find another uh, low cost card to keep in your final five. Uh, keep this because it's Vanish. 
We got rid of anything that costs lots of energy because we want to be able to cast everything, get to our final five, and just consistently be feeding two scrolls of intellect to Reginald. Act two, I'm going to upgrade that to three scrolls, but at the beginning, it's, it's two scrolls of intellect to Reginald as often as I can. I want to always be doing that. And then everything else here is these clear burn, but these ice lances, this curse of exhaustion, are really good for manipulating the enemy's speed. Ice lances will reduce their speed by one, because every five stacks reduced by one. And then Curse of Ajaxion will do, you know, minus six for the days if they're affected by it. And then these scrolls of speed, we have the upgraded version so that we can add plus nine speed to our heroes, but also dispel both the slow and daze effects from the heroes that we cast it on. So Cornelius is here really here to just manipulate the, the turn order of the, the fight and to feed energy and cards to Reginald. Uh, and then, so the kind of cards that you'd be looking for him on Cornelius are the 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 tomes, the books, the trans transmissions, things that 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 feed Reginald or help the team generate resources and stay ahead of the enemies. Uh, da, da, da. Missed something here. Uh, where is it? Prismatic field. Uh, very viable, very needed. This is really helps with the the firefight in Belfort in the hatch and the tree fight. And I even keep it for the uh, the firefight and the, the fire biome. So it's just a, a good blanket insulate. Uh, if you're doing well, turns aren't gonna, the game the fights aren't going to last more than four turns, so the insulate will last the entire fight, and that just keeps your team super healthy. Between this and Otis doing out courage, uh, and Magnus doing uh, for reinforce, your team you'll find that your team takes so much less damage from just having these defensive buffs. Uh, and that should be all for Cornelius. The Flare is just kind of a, a filler. I'd rather have a, a Scorching Ray and these Vanished. Or I'd rather have... Uh, yeah. Uh, there's, there's so many cards you have to Vanish. Uh, you got to get rid of from Cornelius' deck if you're going to make him this this support speedster kind of guy. So it, it takes a lot of manipulation. But like I said, we still have 300 leftover shards. Like, And these are all perfectly viable decks I've taken to, to max scores. And then Magnus. His is a deck you have to manipulate the least. Uh, all we've done is upgrade the barricade, taken out uh, half the fast strikes and defends, and half the rends, and added in these repair armors and intimidates. Uh, I think the repair armors are better to upgrade to the zero cost than the defends. Uh, one, they lose less block, and two, you'd rather be able to consistently put armor on anyone than have to pay for it. Like, a zero cost defend, I'm just going to play it on my Magnus, but sometimes it's going to be wasted. I'm less likely to waste a zero cost repair armor than a zero cost defend because I have three more options of people to put it on. And Magnus's role in this is to go first, to apply uh, vulnerable to the enemy, and to uh, put up critical armor on those that are getting attacked, and also keep the reinforced buff going. So. As long as we have all three of the defensive bus, the, the Reinforce, the Insulate, and the Courage, our team takes so much less damage. And then between Magnus and Otis, we should be able to cover enough uh, block and shield to to prevent a lot of the damage we take. And then you heal up the rest through the the regen from the Healing Reigns and the, the Sanctify stacks. Reginald just has to keep himself healthy. It's the others that need a little help. Uh, on the healing department, and that's where the, the shield of warding comes in for the Otis. But Magnus and Otis will try to prevent as much damage as possible, and then Otis will heal it up. Anyone other than Reggie up with the shield of warding and just blanket heals, and then Reggie will try to heal himself up through Sanctify stacks. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything I missed on Magnus. Uh, yeah, now let's go through the cards that we didn't include that I would include if I had more shards or if I had good divinations. Uh, anything that applies for Magnus, anything that applies uh, Vulnerable Stacks, or Mark, or uh, some cheap barricades. We don't want really one in Trenches in the first act because it just costs too much. We want one and two cost cards. Oh, and also the this Rend is planning to be upgraded in the hatch to the target monster version, not the front monster, so that we can kind of pick and choose where the bleed is going. This is also sort of an Act 2, we'll probably get rid of the Rend. Act Act 2 and 3, we'll get rid of the Rend and Fast Strikes. We'll get rid of the sh Sacred Bolt. And the only person doing damage is really Reginald. And then as the game progresses, we might add some more Fire Spells to Cornelius as he gets 
his talents and level ups to, to more benefit from the, the fire attributes. Uh, yeah, I don't think... Oh, so I was going through cards that uh, we might add in. So anything that does mark vulnerability or efficient blocks that are targetable, hopefully. And then also pet-wise, we want Magnus to get Sharpie to get the speed buff and the dispel. And we want... Um, to get an item that'll help give him because sharpie will only apply the fast effect on round two and later so it's nice to get an item like the there should be a crown from the tree boss that gives a, a plus fast on the first turn so magnus benefits really well from that when he has sharpie the the first turn fast because sharpie will do all the other turn fasts cornelius you want anything that pumps uh, energy and card draw into reginald and efficiently so transmission is nice Upgraded transmission is playable, the vanished version, but you don't want to just give energy away. You want to generate energy. So the the upgraded Tome of Knowledge, uh, the Scrolls of Intellect, and the upgraded transmission can all do that. Uh, and then don't underestimate days. Cornelius also has access to an all-monster shackle. That is a fantastic card. Like, it costs three energy, but it's it's wonderful. Uh, being able to to shackle the entire enemy team or daze the entire enemy team is very good. I wouldn't necessarily go for the three cost daze everyone, but the three cost shackle is is fantastic. But anything that affects the enemy speed, your speed, or pumps your team full of energy, that's Cornelius's job in this setup. Uh, Otis, he's he's pretty set. You're just looking for good defense cards. Uh, there's a, a protect from evil and a uh, sanctuary. Obviously, hopefully you guys are familiar with those cards. Those are great. Preferably the all-hero ones. Uh, these directed vitalities are really good, though. Do not underestimate the ability to target people with vitality buffs. Uh, it can make a big difference on their survivability. Once he levels up, you can start getting rid of these Courages because the Courage buff will come to him through a talent, um, and you don't necessarily need the cards to do it, but this is a great way to do it until then. Uh, if I had more shards, I'd probably upgrade the Dispels first, the Dispel Magic and the Shake It Off. And then I would probably go with the Fanaticisms. Uh, well, maybe this, obviously the Storm, but like I said, we're going to get a free, I'm planning on a, a free upgrade at the hatch. So Storm, uh, Dispel Magic, uh, Heat, Scroll of Intellect, and Rend is the current plan. I, at this point, I'll just probably keep babbling if I keep talking. Uh, I went through a lot of things very fast. If you have any questions, make a comment. I will be sure to answer it or make another video that's more clear on it. But like I said, you can get to this. I save this build and I just, I use this as a checklist to compare. Like after I do divinations, I go check on this checklist and be like, okay, what am I missing? Oh, I need to fill in my inner fires. I need to make sure I have sancti sanctify. I need to get my fanaticisms. So this, this deck will get you to the end. Uh, you'll finish M15, no problem, as long as you understand how to use these cards appropriately. And I will catch you all later. Peace.